just a really quick video to just talk about the differences between diffusion, active transport and osmosis because there are all kinds of transport methods but there is sometimes confusion as to what the difference is between the three. I'm going to take the simplest first of all, diffusion. Now, your definition for diffusion is that it's the net movement of particles from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. This happens very readily and it's the reason, for example, if you spray air freshener in one end of the room, you end up smelling it in the other end. And that's because there's a high concentration, a lot of air freshener particles in one part of the room, there's none in the other, so they'll move across in order to distribute themselves evenly. It doesn't require energy, it's a very, very passive process, diffusion. Osmosis is very similar to, to diffusion in that it occurs down a diffusion gradient, so from high to low, but the crucial difference here is that it is water. So your definition for osmosis is that it's the net movement of water particles from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration across a partially permeable membrane. Make sure you include that last detail because it will get you that final mark in the definition. For people that are studying IGCSE, you might need to use the word water potential instead of concentration. Don't let that confuse you, it means exactly the same. So your definition this time is that osmosis is the net movement of water particles from an area of high water potential to an area of low water potential through a partially permeable membrane. So again, a very passive process occurring down the concentration gradient. Things change when you're talking about active transport. This is the total opposite of both, in that this time the net movement of particles is from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration. And this requires a lot of energy, okay? So you're going to have to add this time that the requirement of energy is involved. And the reason why this is important, for example, is if we take the plant root hair cell. Now, a plant wants all sorts of mineral salts. It wants nitrates, it wants magnesium ions, and the soil doesn't contain very many. However, the roots, in comparison, has a high concentration of these mineral salts. But the plant's greedy. It wants to absorb as many as possible. So it will use active transport to absorb those final um, ions, mineral ions, which are surrounding it in the soil. But this requires energy, and therefore the plant absorbs these extra mineral ions to ensure that it can grow really healthily. I hope you found this video helpful. It was a nice short video, so hopefully not too much to take in. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys next time.